multiple countries, multiple wars, one region, all in the name of oil. For as long as a lot of us can remember, the US has been heavily involved in the Middle East. After all, that huge military budget they have isn't for nothing. Not all of it has been because of oil, but a lot of it has. And the good news is this is slowly but surely not remaining a priority for the US anymore. And that's because America is breaking free from that reliance on traditional oil providers and starting to rely on itself more for energy matters. But to understand how, let's start by understanding why the US became so addicted to foreign oil in the first place. You might think that it's because over time, America's domestic sources, like those in Texas and Alaska, could no longer meet the demand of such an energy-hungry, booming consumer economy. But that's not the full story. See, when you import a product instead of producing it domestically, you free up a slice of your energy budget pie for other economic uses. So some thought it made sense for other countries to handle the energy stuff while America worked on other things like high-end manufacturing and tech. The reality is though, taking this approach has often seen the US become entangled in the domestic politics of foreign nations to decrease the oil price. Policymakers have long been evaluating whether the benefits of using energy savings for other purposes outweigh the increased energy risk posed to the supply chains and have increasingly come to the view that they don't. To understand the importance of energy independence to the United States, we'll look at a few case studies. First, we need to turn back the clock to 1973, when the Middle East was in turmoil during the Yom Kippur War between Israel and Syria and Egypt. The Nixon administration gave a hefty $2.2 billion aid package to Israel, angering oil-producing Arab states. In retaliation, the Arab states shut down oil shipments to nations supporting Israel. The result was predictable. Gas prices shot up by 40% in the US, waiting lines at gas stations stretched for miles, and the most powerful people in the US government started asking if their dependence on Middle Eastern energy is a big problem. Although the oil embargo was eventually lifted thanks to diplomacy, the shock had done enough to expose foreign energy independence as a strategic liability for the US. So, President Nixon launched Project Independence in response to this in order to craft a strategy for the US to become energy self-sufficient by 1980. It included things like building a thousand nuclear power plants by the year 2000, slowing down the speed limits on highways to 55 miles per hour, converting oil power plants to coal, and focusing on building more public transportation. But it didn't quite work out as planned. Even with all these efforts, the US still used more oil after the 1973-74 embargo, and dependence on foreign oil went up to nearly 50% by 1979. Concerns over the safety of nuclear energy, exacerbated by the Chernobyl disaster and further geopolitical shocks to the oil markets like the Iranian Revolution in 1979, all ensured that Project Independence was a dismal failure by its 1980 deadline. Not only that, but it could be argued that the very diplomacy that helped lift the 1974 embargo actually made America even more energy independent. See, key to getting the Saudis on board was the decision for America to guarantee the kingdom long-term security guarantees in return for a steady and reliable supply of oil. These guarantees eventually ended up seeing the US get involved in the Gulf War to prevent Saddam's army from rolling into the Saudi oil fields after it had annexed Kuwait. In the late 1970s, it was the turn of President Jimmy Carter to try and fix the energy independence issue. Carter decided to announce the Energy Security Act, which led to the creation of the US's Strategic Petroleum Reserve and the first forays into researching green energy by the US government. Despite Carter's efforts, few improvements were made in the sphere of American independence that followed, and in some ways things started to get even worse before they got better felt like every administration who attempted to make America energy independent ended up having to go back to the drawing board. The 2000s unfortunately weren't that different. Addicted to oil as ever, energy independence was at the forefront of the new Bush administration's foreign policy, and it was willing to tackle these challenges by any means necessary. While President Bush established the Energy Task Force in 2001 during just his second week in office to decrease American dependency on foreign petroleum, it obviously failed for a multitude of reasons such as big oil influencing the recommendations. And with this failure, we saw the 2003 Iraq invasion, which many have accused of being an imperialist oil grab. And indeed, following the toppling of Saddam Hussein's government in Baghdad in 2003, the new US-installed Iraqi government established new contracts with US oil majors like Chevron and ExxonMobil. Despite the stain of the invasion, acknowledged by many, including even its original supporters as a mistake, the Bush administration set the stage for a genuine revolution in US domestic oil production, whose legacy is still with us today. To put things into perspective to see how far we've come, in 2005, 
the US consumed 44% more energy than they produced, while in 2022, they produced 2.5% more than they consumed. In fact, 2022 was also the first year they exported more oil than they produced since 1952. As recently as 2010, America imported 9.4 million barrels a day of oil more than it exported. And that had swung to a 650,000 barrel per day surplus in 2020. So what happened in this time period? Well, it's actually simple. The shale revolution. Breakthroughs in fracking technology allowed the US to tap into shale gas reserves buried deep into the ground. Just look at the rapid increase from 2007. America was producing so much oil, in fact, that Obama repealed the crude oil export ban in 2015, which had been originally implemented in response to the oil embargo of the 1970s. So while America is now more energy independent than they've ever been since before 1950, the question of if they're actually energy independent right now is still sort of unanswered, if not flat out false. See, up to this point in the video, we've never actually defined what energy independence means. Even outside of this video, it's never really defined, but more a political slogan, not an economic or technical concept with a clear definition. There's two ways many people look at it. Producing more energy than we consume and or exporting more energy than we import. And actually, by both metrics, the US has been energy independent for a few years now. But I mean, if this is true, why do we still import energy, right? Well, we still haven't actually defined what energy even is. The US Energy Information Administration claims the US is a net exporter of oil and petroleum products. But the thing is, petroleum products include a wide range of things I wouldn't call oil, most notably natural gas. The US has become a major exporter of natural gas in recent years. In fact, in the past year, the US has recently become the world's largest natural gas exporter. So if you lump oil and natural gas together, they're a net exporter. However, if you just look at crude oil, the US is still a major net importer, but it is decreasing. This is a bit confusing because technically the US does produce enough crude oil alone to meet its own needs, but it's the wrong type of oil and they can't refine it all. See, crude oil is graded according to two main metrics, weight and sweetness. The weight of oil defines how easy it is to refine or break down into its usable component parts, such as gasoline, jet fuel, and diesel. Light crude is the easiest to handle, heavy is the most difficult, with intermediate obviously somewhere in between. The sweetness refers to the sulfur content of unrefined oil. The sweeter it is, the less sulfur it contains. Most of the oil produced in the US fields in Texas, Oklahoma, and elsewhere is light and sweet, compared to what comes from the Middle East and Russia. Now, the problem is that, for many years, imported oil met most of the US's energy needs. So a large percentage of the refining capacity here is geared towards dealing with oil that is heavier and less sweet than the kind produced here. As a result, lots of US refineries can't process the type of oil that's produced there. This mismatch keeps the US from simply using its own crude production to serve domestic needs. Changing the mix of refineries to accommodate US produced crude oil would be insanely expensive and would take years to complete. And you see, fuels are not really interchangeable. You can't run a car on nuclear power or switch your home heating source if one type of fuel gets more expensive. So it doesn't make much sense from a consumer perspective to lump all energy into one metric. Saying the US is energy independent ignores that the United States needs to import a lot of crude oil, meaning it continues to be subject to the international market and political concerns overseas. Along with this, geography plays a role. Since domestic oil production tends to occur in the middle of the US, it's connected to the Midwest, Gulf Coast, and East Coast refineries, but not the West Coast ones. These West Coast refineries are highly dependent on imports from overseas because of how much cheaper it is to get it. Not to mention there's many limitations on where pipelines and oil-laden railways can run. Overseas oil, even after shipping costs, is usually cheaper than domestically produced crude oil. It's because what oil people call lifting costs, the cost of actually getting the oil out of the ground are so much lower in some other countries. Even on the East Coast, there can be transportation bottlenecks or high transportation costs that make it lower cost to buy from overseas than from US producers. So, complete energy independence isn't really happening or even possible. And it seems like the US is okay with it, at least for right now. Besides, you can argue that the goal of energy independence is to ensure that the US never again experiences the supply disruptions it faced in the 70s Arab oil embargo, which is completely off the table now. So it really is independent enough at the least. America is also investing more into renewable energies and slowly but surely moving away from their reliance on oil. So eventually they may truly, from all possible definitions, finally be fully energy independent. Thank you for watching.